Welcome to episode 80 of New Hampshire Knits, coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire, where our state motto is Knit Free or Die. Today is Friday, June 8th, 2018, and I'm your host, Corinne. This episode is sponsored by thewoollythistle.com. The Woolly Thistle brings the best of British and European yarns to us here in the United States and Canada. The Woolly Thistle will be vending at the art fair at Squam in New Hampshire, Saturday, June 9th from 7 to 10 p.m. It's the first time the Woolly Thistle has vended and we're very excited about it. A little nervous too, if I'm honest, but we'll be attending and I would love to see you there. So if you're at all in the vicinity, make sure you go and enjoy the craft fair or the art fair and uh, come say hello. Examples of yarns that you can squish and sniff while there. Blacker Mohair, Blacker Jacob and Lioness Linen Blends. Jameson and Smith Shetland Supreme and Two Ply Jumper Weight. Now I won't be bringing all of that because there's just too much but I'll bring a sample uh, so you get an idea of what Jameson and Smith Two Ply Jumper Weight looks like. Tuku Sock and Fingering Yarns, John Arban Knit by Numbers, uh, kits and books and magazines and lots more. So do come out and visit at Squam. You can find more details at squamartworkshops.com. Let the woolly thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thank you, new listeners and returning listeners. It's good to be back with you. I actually took uh, about a month off, so it's great to be back with you. How have you been? I hope you've been knitting happy and safe since we last chatted. You know, we hear it declared time and again that knitters are the best. And of course, knitters really are the best people. And I'd like us to show that to my friend Astrid and her family. Astrid is a longtime listener to New Hampshire Knits, and I've met her many, many times, uh, especially at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool over the years. And whenever I meet her, she's full of energy and full of smiles. She joined in the Rusty Cal we did a year or two ago, and she wore her FO with pride and love. In fact, I've one of my favorite photos from New Hampshire Sheep and Wool is a group of us wearing our rusty cardigans and Astrid's in that picture. Astrid will knit anything and everything from plastic bags and old sheets. She's fervent about recycling right through to her wedding dress. Astrid put herself through law school as a single mum. Carson is her lovely daughter and they're always together at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. And she became a public defender serving those who can't afford an attorney on their own. And I know she cares deeply about civil rights and human dignity. She's also a lover of chickens and all creatures. It was very upsetting to receive an email from Carson, her daughter, telling me that Astrid's house burned down. Astrid and her husband Fred did get out along with their dog, but there were other animals and chickens and ducks and geese that did not survive. Carson emailed me to ask if I could help replicate Astrid's Plutolope order uh, so that she could re-knit her rusty cardigan as her knitted items and tools and uh, yarn were all lost in the fire. And I think as knitters, we can relate. We love our knitting stuff. We love our yarn and we love our needles and our finished objects. So to lose everything, especially when you put hours and hours of work into those things, it's especially devastating. And Carson tells me that Astrid really wants to re-knit her rusty as that was one of her favorite FOs. So Carson set up a special fundraiser to replenish Astrid's knitting supplies. And you can help by going to knitsforastrid.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. And there's also a GoFundMe page at gofundme.com astrid 
and dash Fred. I'll put links in the show notes. Uh, when Carson emailed me, she wanted help replicating that order. She wasn't asking for anything, but I have offered to send her everything she needs to re-knit that rusty cardigan. And I hope that maybe you could take a look at, at her knitsforastrid.com page. It's a lovely website. Uh, you'll see pictures of Astrid there with her beautiful daughter, Carson. And maybe there's something there that you can help replace. Uh, I think knitters are the best people. And when a knitter is in need, we do rally. So I just wanted to tell you about that because um, Astrid is a special human being. I'm so glad that she is safe, but it is so hard to hear that a friend has lost everything. So let's get started, shall we? This episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, a Woolly Thistle update, and we'll have a moment of hen at the end. So Off the Needles, the Silver Forest Yoke. Knitting this thing once was apparently not enough for me. I had to knit it twice. I'm considering this yoke as an FO right now because I did knit it twice. <laughs> and the reason I knitted it twice is because I knitted it too big the first time. I thought I'd gotten gauge with my knitting. And so I thought I was knitting the right size. And I didn't go up a needle size as recommended for the color work. So when I finished knitting it, and I've done this before, just think back to the lovage, that once I took it off the needles to have a look at it, it was big enough to fit me and my husband together pretty much. <laughs> I did a lot of knitting on that thing. I could tell as I was nearing the end of it, you knit it bottom up. I could tell that it was really tall. It was going to be too, the row gauge was too big. And so I guessed too that my stitch count would be, or my stitch gauge would be too big as well. And sure enough, it was. It actually was exactly the same size as my first Lovage sweater. So what I did with my Lovage sweater when it was too big and I re-knitted it was I went down a needle size and I went down a sweater size. So I did that again with this. And did I tell you it's the Silver Forest by Jen Stein Gass, knit.love.wool on Instagram. This is a beautiful monochromatic yoked sweater in greys. And I just, I've loved it since it was released and I've been wanting to knit it. And so this fits now, it fits really well. I'm really excited that I got the fit right. So yes, I went down a needle size and I went down a size in the pattern. And I'm going to call that good for now. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. I actually could quite happily just keep knitting on it because now it's zoom zoom part. But I think I'm going to bring it to Squam uh, to help show off the Jameson and Smith Shetland Supreme that I'm knitting it with. Uh, since knitting the Lovage, where the non-color work body was knitted in Jameson and Smith Supreme, I've wanted to knit an entire sweater using that. And so this is the sweater that I'm doing that with. So I thought I'd bring the yoke and the yarn to show you uh, should you come to Squam. But I will get it back on the needles when I get back from that next week and get knitting on it. It may well become my car knitting because uh, on the needles still, but getting very close to finishing is my Tidal sweater from Tidal Yarns. That's been my car knitting and I'm pretty much near the end of the second sleeve. So I'll be binding that off and that will be ready for a block. So that's great. It's been great baseball knitting. My son is in a baseball team. And as long as I've lived in America, I've never quite understood the allure of baseball. Uh, it seems to go on forever. And now I get it, though. I bring my deck chair, my knitting, my water, maybe a snack. <laughs> the boys are playing and not getting in trouble. Uh, they do that funny dance. They're flossing out there. <laughs> out, way in the outfield, you see them flossing. It's really cute. My son is 10. <laughs> and yeah, I get a lot of knitting done at baseball. So I'm loving the baseball. Yeah, so I've been knitting my title tee at baseball, but actually that was usurped by the Silver Forest yoke, which is very, you know, it's color work, but it's fairly simple to knit even while at the baseball. So yeah, I've really enjoyed my knitting. 
And I try not to beat myself up or get annoyed if I do knit something wrong and it needs knitting again, because really I'm a knitter and I'm going to knit and it's all knitting. So I think that's a process knitter in me. I'm quite happy re-knitting something if it means I'm going to get it the way I want it. And while swatching is a thing that we should do and I sort of kind of not do it. <laughs> I fake myself into thinking I swatched, but generally I seem to knit the thing first and count that as my swatch and then go on and knit it again properly. <laughs> That's not recommended, but you know, it is what it is. And I like to knit and I'm quite happy if I'm knitting. So now I've got two beautiful color work yokes that are gigantic because I didn't rip them out. I just uh, started again with uh, fresh yarn. And so I've got these lovely big swaths of knitted fabric now that I need to think of what to do with them. I just admire them right now because they're really quite lovely. Okay, moving on. So hibernating right now is the Radari. That's all done. I'm knitting that in Let Lopi. And that's for Jay. And the body and sleeves are knitted. They just all need to be put together and have the yoke knitted. But I'll do that nearer the fall, I think. And the title sweater is almost finished. I did cast on just the other night Berlin yarn in PT Brown in her four ply, which I have in the store. And I'm knitting the Belvraid Hap, which is a free blacker pattern that you can find on Ravelry. It's a half hap and I'm working on the garter stitch triangle in the middle piece right now where you increase every row with a lovely uh, yarn over. I went up a needle size because this fabric at the recommended needle size for me was too dense. There's a time where I would not have cognated that. I wouldn't have realized that the fabric wasn't what I was going to want. And I think this just speaks to how we evolve as knitters. You know, I used to take, you know, even if I was getting the stitch gauge that a pattern called for, I wasn't really considering the type of fabric I was creating and whether that's what I wanted. I was just getting gauge or I was using the needles they said to use and off I went. And it wasn't until the thing was finished as usual that I stopped to think, oh, it doesn't really hang very well, you know, if it's a shawl or what have you. So I managed to catch it early on that I just switched up the needle size. And I think I'm that was the right thing to do because I'm seeing more drape in it. Yeah, so I cast that on. I'm knitting on still a couple of sweaters and that's good for now. I wanted to let you know that Marie Wallen's new book, Bloomsbury, is coming soon. I caught this on her newsletter. This book is written for Rowan Felted Tweed, which I happen to stock here at the Woolly Thistle. And there's at least four sweaters in that book that I am dying to cast on. Three of them are non-color work and the fourth is color work. One of them is a cable and lace creation. One is a cable ribbed thing. And um, the other one is a cardigan. So they just all look really good. And I really am a big fan of her patterns. So that's Bloomsbury. And I'm hoping to get that at the end of June, early July. I'll get that as soon as I'm able to. And I'll definitely be casting something on as soon as I can. While I'm mentioning Marie Wallen, she will follow up Bloomsbury with her book Wildwood, which will feature her very own yarn she's calling British Breeds. How exciting is that? I'm really excited about this. Marie Wallen is an excellent designer and I think her yarn will be fantastic. I'm really excited and I'll be sharing more with you over time. Keep your eyes peeled for both these books and Marie Wallen's new yarn, aptly called British Breeds. So let's move on to the Woolly Thistle update. As always, thank you so much for your orders and for your emails and text messages and any which way you get in touch with me. I really love hearing from you. And I think um, some of my favorite correspondences include when you're asking for photos of yarns together because you can't quite tell how they're going to go together. I'm very happy to do that. And I love it when you reply to the notice that your item has been shipped out or you email me when you receive it and you love what you got. <laughs> They're just the nicest, nicest correspondences. So thank you. And thank you for placing orders in the first place. And thanks for telling your friends about the shop as well as sharing your purchases on Instagram. It all helps uh, get the Woolly Thistle's name out there and sharing it with 
more knitters. Uh, for the first time ever, the Woolly Thistle will be vending at Squam Art Fair in New Hampshire on Saturday, June 9th. That's from 7 to 10 p.m. And I'm planning to bring as much as I can. My booth space is only six feet, so it's a table of six feet. Also, many of the yarns I stock come in several colors, as you know, so I can't bring everything and I have to be really selective. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring a selection of different colors from different yarn lines so that you can see how they're dyed and, and how they feel and how they sniff and all of this good stuff. And then I'll try and bring whole ranges or most popular shades of some other yarns that you could actually buy and take away with you. But I'm hoping that if you're not able to purchase something right there while we're vending, that you will at least have had an experience of touching the yarn and uh, getting an idea of what it would look like finished up. And so you would visit the shop. So that would be great. I'm hoping that my husband will be along to help me man the stall. Apologies ahead of time if we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> because this is our first time vending and I hear that uh, the internet can be a little spotty there on the, on the Squam. So we'll do our best and we will definitely be happy to meet you and chat with you and help you with your yarn selection. So coming in to the Willy Thistle soon is Susan Crawford's Exelana. I have that here. I just need to get it all photographed and up in the shop. Several of the patterns in her book, Vintage Shetland Project, are knitted in Exelana, so you will be able to get that very yarn here. And of course, Fenella has been in the shop for a few weeks, maybe three or four, but um, I was missing four colors. They are now in the shop. So we have the full complement of colors for your color work patterns that you want to knit out of Vintage Shetland Project. This last week, I spent several days in my garage packing up orders of Vintage Shetland because we'd been waiting and waiting for that ship to dock and for the order to get through customs and up to the wilds of New Hampshire here. And it was eventually delivered and I spent the next few days manically, maniacally packing and getting your orders out. And I've seen on Instagram that they are arriving and you are squealing with delight at this doorstep of a book. It's so big and heavy and full of treasure. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. And if you haven't already, check out Franklin Habits review of the book over on Mason Dixon Knitting. Um, he writes a beautiful review on there and I'll try and put a link in the show notes. So more vintage Shetland books are coming. If you would like to be notified when they are available again, go to thewoollythistle.com, go to Vintage Shetland under books or under bookshelf, I think, and click on the product page and click on the green button in there that says email me or notify me when back in stock. I have lots and lots of books coming to replenish those that went out. So it will be back in stock soon. Well, I say soon, not soon. It's at the printer right now. We're on our second printing and it will be after that's finished and after it gets over here on a ship. <laughs> so quite a while yet, but if you wanna be notified, just do what I said and you will receive an email. You'll be amongst the first to know that it's available. West Country Spinners, Country Birds and Spice Rack is all fully stocked again. So you should be able to get what you want there. I still have lots of beautiful uh, florist collection, which are lovely spring, summer, flowery colors. Really lovely. And I'll be bringing that to Squam too, or some of it. I want to highlight Lioness by Blacker. I have that both in DK and four ply. So this is great for knitting summer knits. It's a 50-50 linen Falkland wool blend. So it's lovely and soft to start with. Got a bit of stretch so that when you're knitting, it's not uncomfortable. And of course, as you wash it, that linen just gets better and better. Beautiful colors. And I think a Tegna by Boyland Networks knitted up in that would be great. Also the... Um, 
iris shrug that my friends Sarah of Yarns at Yin Hu and Emily of Fibertown have been knitting. Their cal is still going on, I believe, until the beginning of July. I'm almost completely out of Samite as is blacker. They need to uh, spin up more and they will be doing that. But I only have a couple of shades left. So if you're interested in Samite, I would get that sooner than later. But I think Lioness 4-ply would be a great substitute. We have several copies of Len 5 still in stock, which is great news. I just sold out of Len 4, so I'll need to see if I can get more of that. I do have Len 3 in stock, and I have an order in for Len 1 and 2, which is being reprinted. So I will have 1 and 2 in. Uh, I have 3. I'll get 4 more in. <laughs> and five is in. Oh my goodness, the Lada dress in Len 5, Lina 5, sorry, is um, very popular and that's knit in Tuku sock wool. So Tuku from Finland in their sock yarn. I believe I was one of maybe the only retailer of this sock yarn, so I'm not sure if any other shops are are selling it yet or now, but I have a pretty good stock of the sock yarn left, though a lot of it has gone out since Lina 5 released. But I do have an order in, so I should be getting more, especially in that color that they use in the magazine. So if that interests you and the color you want is out of stock, hit that green button on the product page again, and you will be notified as soon as I put it in the shop. And uh, as is typically the case, don't delay. If there's something you want and it's in stock or it becomes available, then you want to you want to get it as soon as possible. My Plutolopi is in short supply right now. Even though we're getting into the warmer climes, that is still a yarn that you love and love to have. Uh, so I need to put an order in. So if what you want is lower out of stock, there will be more coming. Knit Sonic's brand new book, Colorwork Playbook, is now also in stock along with the coloring companion. So feel free to order those. I have a few left. And Kate Davis's new book is sold out and seems to be sold out at the distributor too. So I'm waiting to hear when I can get more of those. So again, hit that green button in the shop if you're waiting for that. And I will make sure to get enough so that you get one. Also just in is the By Hand Serial number five, which is focused on the Blue Ridge Mountains this time. This is a, a lovely, lovely book that definitely has knitting patterns, but has some other things too. And it's more a travel log, which is really nice. I think if you're ever visiting a place that this book features, it would just give you that added depth of experience for when you visit or when you have visited to see what fiber related things are around in that area. So number five is just in and it's going out the door pretty quickly. So get that if you want that. I'm out of pom pom 25, but more of that will be coming in soon as well. So yeah, I think that's it for the shop update for now. I'm just busy working away with Squam. And after that, I'll be back and hopefully casting on some new knits and getting progress on some others. So I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting and here's your moment of hen. Bye bye. <laughs> you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore Knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly. Woolly.